Next up, we have an uh, incredible keynote speaker. Um, his name is Philip Rosedale. He uh, created something called Second Life, in case you don't know. Uh, <laughs> he's working on something incredibly awesome called High Fidelity, and I'll let him talk a little bit about that. It'll take him a little moment to get set up. So uh, I, I too, uh, grew up dreaming about virtual reality. Uh, I was, I'm a, my background is physics and computers, and uh, the first time I, um, well, when I moved to San Francisco and, and really discovered the internet, the only thing I could imagine doing with it, sort of seeing it as the early web at the time, was uh, somehow tying together all these computers using, uh, you know, internet communication, using IP packets, and turning the whole thing into an enormous uh, virtual space in which we could all make things. Um, I was fascinated by the kind of dual question of what we would do together in a place where we could, uh, as, as Johnny and Cosmo said, uh, do almost anything we could imagine. And I was also intrigued by the question of whether we could uh, come together and experience each other in ways that uh, existing communication systems couldn't give us and in ways that we normally could only capture face to face. So step back for a moment and, and look at Oculus. Uh, uh, is Oculus uh, as, a, as a piece of hardware by itself the future of, of all internet and communication? Well, it's a piece of it. Um, it is an amazing, incredible, now almost upon us immersive piece of hardware. But the question uh, that it begs, and begs oh so much more because it's such an amazing experience, is where are we all going to go? And what will we be and what will it be like when we come together in that space? And Second Life was my first attempt to answer that question. Uh, and Second Life is incredible. We did everything we could do uh, with what computers could do in uh, starting in about the year 2000. You can see if I put the microphone up too high, the 3D camera that's up here watching my face doesn't quite get it. Um, and now, uh, 14 years later, about a year ago, we started working together on High Fidelity, which is not ready for prime time yet, but it is interesting enough that uh, it's a delight and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm honored to be here and give you a little uh, early demonstration of it. This is something that is not up and running yet. There's about 100 people using it right now. With a little luck, somebody might show up and start bugging us here because there's there are people in here. Uh, and this gives you an idea what it's like. So let me show you a quick demo of a couple of things that could be a little bit different. Um, in addition to the Oculus and the amazing sort of rendering capabilities that we have there, the feeling of, of, of visual immersion, what we're fascinated with at High Fidelity is the, the more general use of not just the Oculus, but sensor devices and motion controllers, as I'll show you. Uh, hey, hey, there's my hand. Hello, everybody. Um, this is terrible. Not only is this mic kind of kind of quiet, but I, I can't stick it under my arm right now and get my other hand up in the air so I can talk to you with my hands. Um, but uh, what we're focused on at High Fidelity is basically taking advantage not just of the Oculus, but also of devices like this 3D camera. This is a Prime Sense, basically a Kinect that's sitting on top of my laptop. Uh, and also, uh, not just the Razer Hydra, which is what you're seeing right here, but the several amazing new motion controllers that are about to come to market. Probably the one many people in here know is the Six Sense uh, STEM system, which is about to come out. There are, there are several other uh, remarkable motion controllers, not to mention things like the mocap suits that are worn in this room. Uh, I actually think, in a sense, that uh, motion capture and these devices, uh, uh, the, the ability to basically give us that six degrees of freedom that I can have with my hand and 12 with both my hands, were I able to hold the other one. Uh, actually, I put my other hand over here so it doesn't look so horribly broken, right? This is one of the things we're working on. That's probably bothering you. Look at that. Um, oh, now it's sticking right through my chest. Oh, that's the right one. Here we go. Now I look now and now I look kind of crazy too. But uh, look at that. We're working on that. So uh, we're working on using this hardware to basically immerse you uh, in the world and give you the ability to touch and, and build and do things in that world. So uh, whoa, here's Ryan. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna the, one of the things we're working on isn't just the capability of these systems to detect other people. 
It's also the capability that they have to do that with extraordinarily low latency. You've heard about the Oculus being this sort of 10 millisecond magic, right? Where we've got to update the screen 10 milliseconds after you look at it. Look how close I can come to Ryan there just by moving my head forward. Uh, you've got to update the screen in 10 milliseconds. Well, a, an equal question is if we're talking to each other and we want to interrupt each other in chat, how many milliseconds is that? How many milliseconds is it from me to Ryan before I lose the ability to really talk to him? Well, we know it doesn't work with our cell phones, right? They're horrible. Uh, our cell phones, and this is part of the reason we don't use them today anymore, are about three to 500 milliseconds. Ryan, say hello, Ryan. Hello, everybody. So you can look at Ryan's face back there, kind of watch him. Hello, hello. You can, you can see, see me back here on the couch, but you can also see me <laughs> up there on the screen. And I can interrupt him. I can nod at him. I can, I can move while he's talking. Ryan is separated from me by 100 milliseconds, and the servers that we're talking through are up in Santa Clara. The internet has changed today so that if we use the best approaches we can possibly use with the technology, this is great because the person behind Ryan is, is one of our, now by the way I can look around and see him. Hey Kevin, we're actually doing a demo, you're on stage Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, Nothing Kevin, like you're, live demo, right? you're hiding behind Ryan, and you're actually on stage at the VR demo. And turn off mute your mic, Kevin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, think I can reach out. This is one of the things we're working on. Oh, this isn't quite working. I'm trying to do this right now. I can actually touch Ryan and, like, move him around by grabbing onto him. I don't know why I can't right now. Oh, Ryan, you have avatar collisions turned off. That's why it is. But... Um, Basically, I can, reach, I can reach out and touch him. I can talk to him. Uh, you have to try this, and you can come back there to our booth in the corner after this and try it yourself. You can actually try it with the Oculus on, which is really a trip, uh, talking to somebody else. But the latency is low enough that the magic happens, just like with the Oculus. The magic of being able to talk to somebody and really know them and understand them and feel close to them does actually happen with all this stuff we're working on. So that's pretty darn cool. So that's one thing that's, that, 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 that's coming that's just going to be unbelievably amazing if, if we and, and or other people can get it working for you. So I think that's pretty amazing. And it's what uh, this, this sort of sensation of what it's like to see somebody else's face like Ryan's right now is what started the company. I mean, tell us about, I mean, tell us something about, uh, well, tell us about Ryan the Avatar, the difference between Ryan the Avatar and Ryan the person. Well, Ryan the Avatar has flawless skin. He's, he's much younger and a little happier than I am all the time. Um, he makes really great faces. Whenever I drive him, I just kind of feel a little happier because he, he always looks good. Even when I'm tired, he, he never is. And, uh, and so I like that. So I, I like coming in and driving him around. <laughs> we have all our company meetings in this space. Um, uh, so, so we have literally have 10 of us sitting and uh, 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 talking to each other. now. Now, in addition to talking to Ryan, how about drawing in the air? How about drawing around behind him and then back in front of him, kind of putting him in a little jail of voxels? These are voxels today, but they're going to be modeled objects tomorrow. We're just showing you the earliest version of this. But look how I can do that with my hand. You know, I can pick a different color, and I can, I can literally draw in space around Ryan, and we can both do that at the same time. That's pretty amazing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, High Fidelity, like Second Life, has a scripting language. This time around, we're using JavaScript, and so I can basically load files that are kind of like attachments in Second Life that'll do things in the world. So I can basically just load up a little file here that lets me uh, do something like shoot a gun. And of course, I could shoot Ryan, I guess, if I wanted to. I'll, you can't kill him yet, but... And I'm actually blowing holes in those voxels. And that simulation is being done at, at, at 60 frames per second on the servers that are sort of in between us. So he's seeing it exactly as I see it. Again, the speed of this system is just uh, astonishing. Now, uh, with only a little time for a demo, I'll just show you a couple more things. But I could go on and on and show you this stuff all night. And you're welcome to come play with it back, back in the corner there. Um, the other thing that we're able to do... Uh, I mentioned there's sort of two big things that I think make the... Well, what's coming that we're going to see on the software side in virtual reality amazing and additive to what we're seeing with all these devices. Um, and the first thing is, is, is what we've just shown you, this ability to communicate face-to-face. -face. The second thing is, who are the servers? Where are the servers? How is this going to work? Um, we've got the internet today, which is all these web servers connected together by hyperlinks. There's millions and millions of them. 
Uh, we've got big gaming systems, systems like Second Life that are primarily servers that are uh, in server farms. Where are the servers going to live? Well, this is the other thing we've been working on. What we've realized is that internet latencies have dropped so low and the stability of even our home uh, broadband connections are so good that there we've got a fighting chance at basically actually using our own computers to comprise the server network of the virtual world. Now, if we could do that and we could use your computer while you're asleep, basically, to be part of the virtual simulation of a big world, we could get access potentially to a thousand times more computers than we can get uh, from all of the computers in all of the server farms that there are today. We estimate there's about 600,000 out there in, say, Amazon and, e uh, Amazon and Rackspace. There's about 600 million computers like ours at home. So the next thing we're doing with High Fidelity is we're building a system that's going to let everybody share their computers. And uh, what I'll show you here, I'm going to fly down here, is a little dance club off in the distance here. And inside that dance club is a bunch of dancing avatars. You can come see them later. And every one of them is running on a different computer. And they're all listening to music so much in real time that I can yell at them. And they're actually, one of the things they're doing, along with waving their arms and moving around, is actually listening to my audio. So those are individual sort of bots on other people's or on, on, a, on a whole bunch of server processes which are not attached to the server that's actually kind of hosting all this structure here. And it's running on other people's machines. So we're going to build this, this marketplace that basically allows us to uh, connect together everybody else's machines and borrow server time from each other and build a uh, virtual infrastructure that is... Uh, you know, as I said, thousands of times richer and more detailed uh, even than the things you've seen in the most remarkable uh, games or even places like Second Life, which has kind of got the most content, uh, more content than anybody could even begin to consume at this point. Uh, so those are, a, those are a couple of the things that we're doing with High Fidelity. And I think that, uh, again, the, the, the critical question to ask about these virtual worlds now that we actually have this enabling technology, and again, it's not just the Oculus, it's also these cameras and motion controllers, is where are we all going to go, and how are we going to get together in these spaces, and how's identity going to work, and how are you know how are we going to uh, uh, live in these spaces together? How are we going to economically share, decide who gets to build what, and what happens? So uh, uh, those are some great big issues, and I'm just extremely excited by uh, uh, not so much the f Facebook Oculus acquisition, but the very fact that it validates how serious all of this stuff is, and what we're all about to be a part of as, as this equipment continues to kind of roll out into the marketplace. And I intend, and we intend at High Fidelity to, uh, uh, you know, use every moment of every day to, to bring to life the shared space that we can all go into. And uh, that's what we're working on. So thank you very much. Quick demo. That was really really cool that's actually the first time I'm seeing that yes thank you please please how much money have you guys raised a lot of money right <laughs> yeah they're working on some crazy stuff and, and uh, we're, we're all very privileged to be able to check that out tonight so I'm very happy that they could join us today